This is Sonic Control's DAW School, where you learn how to plan and buy the right computer system to record your music. So get ready, because here comes the teach. Hi everybody, I'm Peter Alexander, and welcome back to DAW School. Now, in each episode, we've been looking at what makes a digital audio workstation a digital audio workstation. Now, there's a mouthful. Well, this week, we're going to keep going a little further, and we're going to start talking now about the computer. But before we go to that point, I want to put up a graphic from last week, and it should be up right now. And take a look at this graphic, because what you're seeing here are the concepts of what made up a digital audio workstation in that piece of hardware called the E5000. Now all those points you see on screen right now, all of those will now apply to the computer. And we're going to talk about that. And one of the things we're going to focus on as well is that in this computer that we're looking at in this webisode, this is the one you will do your main recording on. And so this is the one that will have your sequencing digital audio software on it. This will not be a farm system, at least not for this webisode. We'll come back and look at what a farm system is later on. Now, I'm going to bring you up a new graphic. And this is very interesting, but it's also really critical. On the left side, you'll see the word E5000. And underneath, you'll see the words component part. And what that means is, is that the E5000 was a piece of a studio. It was a part of the studio. And when you got that E5000, it came, and I'm going to say the obvious, already assembled. You didn't have to do anything. It was already there. Somebody already decided for you what was going to be the audio in there. The effects were already picked out for you. The program was already done on the little sequencing uh, program that was built into it. All that was done. All you had to do was give them the money. And then you could take it home. And after you got it home, 30 to 45 minutes later, maybe an hour if you had a big studio, it was in place, it was set up, and you were working it. And that was the benefit of you not having to do any system integration. All you needed to know as a system integrator was where were the ports for the MIDI cables and where did you stick the audio cables. Once you knew that, your system integration job was over. Now, let's look at the right side of the screen where I have that magic word computer. I probably should put DAW, but I put computer there instead. And here are some words that should bring a slight chill to your heart. And those words are, you are involved with the system integration. When you got the E5000, you did not get a bag of parts. But when you create a digital audio workstation, you get a box of parts. <laughs> Actually, you get boxes of parts. Actually, if you have it built for you, like uh, with the people at ADK Pro Audio, you'll pick out what you want on screen on their assembly program and they have all the boxes. You don't see the boxes so you'll end up seeing and getting a finished workstation. But up until that point you're involved with all the system integration and once that digital audio workstation arrives on your doorstep and you've approved it and it's set up and working in your studio, hey I've got some news for you. Once you've got it all the system integration from that point forward is on you. Now that's what most people don't want to hear, but that's why you're at DAW School. So we can tell you all the things you don't want to hear before you spend the money, or if you're at a school before you make an investment and build a computer lab, or if you're at a church before somebody talks you into buying a gigantic computer system that only they can run, you know what's involved before you sign the check. So the two points I want you to understand on a digital audio workstation is that number one, you're involved with the system integration and the creation of it, and you are ultimately responsible for the system integration of everything you add to it from that point forward. 
Okay. I hope I haven't scared you too much because it does get better. So I want you to understand something that the manufacturers do a very bad job of explaining. And I wish they would explain this because it would just make it so much easier to understand what it is you're really doing and what you're really getting once you've completed the task. So here's what I want you to get. You are not building a computer, okay? You are not building a computer. I want to say it one more time, just so that you know I'm not stuttering and I'm in full control of my speech. You are not building a computer. What you are doing, and be listen carefully. Gee, I sound like your dad, don't I? What you are doing is you are creating, catch these words, a professional recording studio capable, capable of recording almost anything anything. One more time, you are creating a professional recording studio capable of recording almost anything. Now, why am I saying that? Well, there are four major software programs that are used for digital audio recording. Actually, there's more than four, but the ones that end up showing up the most or in the most discussion and the most use are on the Macintosh, Digital Performer, and Logic, and on the PC, Cubase and Cakewalk Sonar. Well, in the past few years, Cakewalk Sonar has grown up. At one time, it was, it was a program that PC enthusiasts used, and we snobby guys back in L.A., we kind of like, yeah, okay, I did that at Cakewalk Sonar. You can't do that at Cakewalk Sonar anymore because it's grown up. It's got a powerful audio engine with it, I think it's one of the best programs on the PC I've seen in a long time. And that program and Cubase and Digital Performer and Logic, all four of them, are used on recording projects from CDs, hip-hop, dance, R&B, film scores, especially in, in Europe. The PC is the number one music computer in Europe because of the price. So Cubase is one of the dominant programs over there. And hundreds, if not thousands of movies and games, are uh, music, are produced using Cubase. So all of this software is now professional-grade software down at a consumer price. Now, if you're new to this, you may go, wow, that's a consumer price? Well, yeah, it's a consumer price. Because when you look at what you're getting in this software package, usually for around $495, it is an incomparable savings. You are saving literally tens of thousands of dollars because once your digital audio workstation is established, you probably won't even need a hardware mixing board. You can do everything in that one computer. All right, I hope you're still with me. So let's look at what the parts of this studio are. Well, first of all, there's the software that you picked. Now, I'm always asked the question, hey man, what's better, the Mac or the BC? Here's the answer. It depends. It depends on which software program you think is going to do the job for you. And once you've picked out that software program, then you decide whether you're going to use a Mac or a PC. And that's the one that's best, the one that works the best with the software. So first, there's the sequencing digital audio program. Then there's the computer itself. There is an audio card MIDI interface. With that, you have to have what's called monitors. Monitors is a fancy name for speakers. And the types of speakers that you use when you're doing professional work are called near-field monitors. I will explain that in a later webisode. But that's what they're called. They're called near-field monitors. And then last but not least, you need a MIDI keyboard. Well, once you have all that, you have a professional recording studio with the software. Now, if you get a junior grade program, well, no, it's not a professional studio. But if you spend usually the extra 100 or $200 to get the full program, then, yeah, you have a professional studio. And by the way, I advise almost always to get the um, higher end program instead of the junior grade program. Where's the development money going into? It's going into the big program. So get the big program. 
even if it's a couple hundred dollars more, in the end, it's worth the investment. And you'll really be glad that you have it. So those become the component parts of that studio. And here's something that's really kind of freaky or bizarre that we can say today that I couldn't have said really even five years ago. And that is, is that that entire studio can literally fit on a desktop. I'm not kidding. You can put your entire studio on a desktop, stick it in the corner of a room, and nobody would ever know that you have a professional recording station sitting in the corner. That's how compact all of the software and the technology has become. You want to make sure you get a good set of headphones to mix with as well. But once you have that, you've got a complete professional recording studio sitting right there.